Join me as I explore Intervoke's physiology of the eye and application on the room scale virtual reality device, the HTC Vive. Uh, let's go straight in. So this uh, technology, which has been available for over a year now, uh, is for home consumption. It's a room scale virtuality device, which uses two sensors to gauge where you are in a room and also has two um, controllers, which each of which um, has quite a lot of customizability. So uh, here I am. So this is telling me about uh, various planes. And this is quite useful because uh, it explains you know, from a basic level, so that a patient, for example, or someone who's just learning, uh, can understand the quite complex sometimes to grasp initially planes when you're dealing with anatomy. So if you're watching this on a screen, then you, you don't have any appreciation of what I'm seeing now, which is a very much a, a virtual reality room. It feels like I'm in a room and everything has scale and um, I feel like I can um, explore the room as, as as I would do a normal room and there's a big uh, model in front of me of a uh, anatomy cadaver and so I'm getting these just little guides to, to the various planes and the terms that people use in anatomy okay so that was just a nice little uh, primer into uh, the beginning so now into planes so now I'm looking at the eye and the, it's very big and it looks measures about one times uh, one meter in front of me and it's labeling the different areas which is nice very detailed uh, model here in terms of the vessels and it's going through the muscles so here we go so I can scale in and out using the button here to make the model bigger or smaller and I can even go within the muscle which is quite a funky little maneuver so I can even see how the muscles are inserted um, and this model is actually more detailed than I thought it would be which is very nice oops what's happened there so what happens is I press the button which pause the the video and en enables me to um, look at the various planes uh, without the discussion but uh, I'll go back to the audio commentary. So it's going through the muscles one by one. And there's a nice little scrolling down text here, uh, which is being read out, obviously, by the narrator. And here we see both the labeling of the muscle and a, an idea about the movement. So I think this will be useful both for clinicians, you know, who are learning uh, at the initial level uh, when, when learning basic sciences. Plus it's useful for patients and patients' families to understand, for example, what kind of operations are um, they're undergoing or what muscle has been damaged by uh, wh whichever pathology. Oh, I just found the side buttons here can move this a bit so you can grab the model and move it around a little bit uh, and bring it you know close to you you know affect the angle uh, that you're looking at the the structure which is quite nice um, so that's quite good so the good thing about uh, the muscle model is that you can pull a muscle uh, to move the eye in the direction that the muscle uh, moves in so you can get a good idea about how the pulley mechanism works and of course you can uh, move the model around using the side buttons and so you can approach it from uh, different angles as I, as I say my criticism of the side muscles side buttons rather is that they're quite hard to to maneuver so now I can get uh, another view and again help it helps me contextualize uh, conceptualize rather um, how the muscles work just by pulling by pressing the trigger button so 
So this is, uh, for me, one of the best functions of this uh, application for uh, how it helps, um, you know, the understanding of uh, anatomical movements and uh, the structures. Okay, so this is the a quiz that's uh, um, you can do as soon as you've had the um, kind of learning experience. So now I can rotate the model, and it's testing me on the layers, and um, I assume on the anatomy as well. So I have to point so I can get cl as close as I want to, of course. The only problem is sometimes with this pointing device, you might miss and press the wrong thing. But it's quite nice. You can get to just, instead of doing multiple choice questions in a textbook, you can do them in virtual reality. And, uh, you know, the immersive nature of this technology, I think, means that you can um, develop memories of your learning experience, which are slightly more immersive than if you're just reading a textbook. So there we go. Next chapter. And functions of the eye. Great. So I can, oop, I can rotate this again and scale. make it big so it's almost like I can almost enter this uh, the eye really it looks huge now and I can obviously shrink it to as much as, as small as I want so it's describing the anatom anatomical structures there and then the label very clearly shows uh, what the narrator is describing and obviously you can walk around the structure my only criticism is that it's a bit too quick, I imagine, for patients who are looking at this. There we go. So here we can also grab the um, model as well um, by using these side keys. I would say that the, the side keys on the Vive are a little bit difficult to uh, handle sometimes. I mean, the Vive controller has, has a huge number of buttons, and perhaps these side keys aren't the best choice in terms of um, the, w the one that you'd automatically uh, use for moving some an object around. It, it's actually quite hard on, on, the, on the wrist and the hand. I would say the trigger probably is a better one. Um, and perhaps those side keys could be used for scaling, because scaling I, I don't think is as important as being able to grip the uh, structure and just move it around yourself, which I think is quite a useful tool to have. So I'm just, I'm just uh, zooming in and out as per what, what I want to do, because I'm just playing with this, with the structure. So it's nice just to be able to dip my head in between the layers of the eye, <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to be causing any damage, of course. OK, so now it's going to explain accommodation using this model, which I think is a very good application for virtual reality. So on the floor it also shows how much uh, progress I've made during this particular um, episode. The narr narrative is clear. Uh, my only criticism, as I as to re reiterate, is that she perhaps speaks a bit too quickly for people to synthesise uh, the information being given because this is all. You know, at an appropriate level for people who are just 
learning the basics of ice structures. There we go. So that was that. And that's going to the aqueous humor flow, which is, this is a nice model. And this is very useful, I think, for explaining um, drainage to patients who are suffering from uh, um, glaucoma. And the model itself tilts effectively to just allow you to look at the relevant parts, which I, which I think is quite nice. This model doesn't seem to be um, able to be uh, shrunk or increased in size, which is a bit of a disadvantage in comparison with the other ones. Um, so I can't scale this one. Okay, and so it finishes with a quite challenging looking uh, um, labeling of this model, and I can scale the model and rotate it, which is nice. So let's try to solve this. So locate the ciliary body. Let's make it a bit smaller so I don't miss it. Locate the choroid. Locate the lens. And obviously, I can go towards towards it, and it's like a feels like a, it's a, so, a spherical orb. Very nicely designed uh, uh, label mechanism here, which actually makes it quite hard to miss, really. So, locate the ciliary muscles. Locate the zonular fibers. Oops, got that wrong. So to get the sclera, let's rotate it a little bit. That's good. I'm going to zoom through this because as someone who works in this field, I should be reasonably quick at this. And there we go, an A. So I mislabeled the ciliary muscle, um, but that's not the end of the world. So that's it um, for this application. Um, and in summary, I think it's, uh, it's a very good educational tool. Um, it can certainly do with a few more features and perhaps a slower speed of uh, narration. Um, in some ways, the chapters can be split up a little bit further to give uh, the user a bit more time to explore uh, things such as the extraocular muscles or um, you know the ocular surface or the retina uh, because it does really speed through it quite a bit but um, this is my first real experience of a virtual reality uh, anat anatomical uh, software for the eye and I think it really bodes well uh, not just for clinician training but as mentioned for patient training uh, patient education as well because they can learn about the structures of the eye which are which are affected in a non-threatening um, relaxed environment uh, where it's just easy to manipulate the structure so who would I recommend this to I would uh, recommend it to medical students who are uh, perhaps about to start their ophthalmology rotation for revision I'd uh, recommend it to medical students who are a bit early on who are just um, learning their anatomy um, I would even recommend it to nurses or people in other fields where uh, they might be uh, look, having to uh, treat people with eye problems. And then from a patient perspective, I would recommend it to patients who are interested in eye problems or who have problems or people who are family members of those who uh, have an eye problem so that they can just understand more about the structures uh, of the eye, which I think it does effectively, uh, and hopefully we can see these kind of applications develop both for the eye and for other fields uh, of medicine. Uh, thank you for joining me.